Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Parental Vision Podcast. I'm your host, Tiana Caprice. And today I have the pleasure of speaking with Nicole Lara, mother of three, where we dive into our journey of motherhood and talking about taking accountability, raising three kids with over 15 year age gaps and just how much and how important it is to be a career driven woman and also follow your dreams and be a mother. Take a look. Welcome to Friends of Vision Podcast, Nicole. So happy to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. So obviously you're here because you're a mom. Yes. So tell me a little bit about your journey with motherhood. How'd it come about? Whew. I've been a mother for 30 years now. <gasps> wow. 30 years. My oldest son is 30. But um, motherhood for me started when I was 23. Mm. Um I won't say we, we didn't plan the pregnancy, okay. um, but it was probably one of the most rewarding events for me in my life. Um, just to, you know, become a new mom and, and you know, I, I made it through my teenage years yeah. um, not being a mom and you know, being kind of semi-established. Mm -hmm. um, so to become a mom at that point in time, I felt like I was ready. Really? I did. I did. I mean, I didn't know everything, but I did. I felt like, um, you know, at the age of 23, I was already, you know, kind of in my career. Okay. Um, I was working for the federal government at the time. But I actually am still there. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. It'll be... 34 years, 34 years that I've been with the federal government. Yep. yep. Oh my goodness. So, That's a you know, thing. I was, I was established enough that I felt that, you know, I, I wasn't nervous at all. So when you initially found out you weren't nervous at all? I wasn't nervous at all. Oh, wow. I wish I was you. <laughs> you know what? It, it, what I was nervous about was telling my mom. Everyone's nervous about telling their mom. I was nervous mom. about yeah. telling my mom. Yeah. 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 So were you more nervous to tell your mom than your dad? Um, yes. Very much so? Yeah. You want to know the truth about me? What? I was really scared to tell my mom over my dad, too. Like, yeah. it was it was like my heart was pounding. I was like, how am I going to tell her? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But tell me about that, if you don't mind, and you know, diving into that. How did you tell your mom? Um, I wish I could remember. <laughs> I, honestly, I wish I could remember. Um... But one of the things, I had a relationship with my mom that was like, um, I could pretty much go to her with anything. Really Open, open door policy. It was an open door policy. I could go to her with anything. I never felt like um, she was judging me. Um, and I don't want to get sentimental because I just lost my mom. Like, I lost my mom in May of last year. Oh, I'm sorry. So, no, it's okay. Um, I'm coping through it. Yeah. But my mom was an amazing woman. Amazing woman. Um, so I felt like I was prepared, you know, based on how she raised us. Um, I have two older sisters. So based on how she raised us, I was prepared to be a mom and I knew that my mom would be there for me every step of the way in order to guide me. So I wasn't nervous about being a mom. I just was nervous about telling her, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because at the time I wasn't married. Um, my boyfriend at the time was away in college. So he wasn't even in the state of Connecticut. So just wondering, you know, what she would think about it. Yeah. I think that's where the nervousness came from. But mm -hmm. she was happy. She was? Yeah, she was happy. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, wait, you only have, how many kids do you have? I have three. You have three? I have three children, two oh. boys and a girl. And when I tell you, the age range is crazy. Tell me the, the age differences, please. So, my oldest is 30. Okay. The middle one just turned 22. Mm -hmm. 
And my youngest, my daughter, will be 15 the end of this month. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. So it was like having, it was like having a child like all over again each time. Each time, yeah. Each time. And yep. what was that what was that like for like mothers that start over? How does that feel to to be starting over essentially? Um what does it feel like to start all over? Cuz put it like this, my daughter's 10. Mhm. And I want to have another baby in 2 oh, years. Oh, you only have one. I only okay. have one. Yeah, I'll be 33 this year. So I want to do it by the time I'm 35. If I don't do it, it ain't it's not going to happen. <gasps> That's what I said with each and every one. You did? Like, with my my oldest son, I said, if I don't have another one by the time he turns five, I'm not having any more. Oh, you know? wow. But I always wanted more than one child. I never wanted to have an only child. Oh, really? No. Okay. Never wanted to have an only child. Um, how come? Um, because I have siblings. True. So I always wanted my child to have siblings. Right. And I never, I, I it, forward thinking. Mm-hmm. I said, when it's my time to no longer be here, I don't want my child to be here alone. You sound you know like me, I mean? yeah. And I know what what I've gone through. Like I now I've buried both of my parents. Oh. You know what I mean? And to have my siblings there by my side to lean on to, you know, I think it's important. I yeah. really do. Like I don't know what I would have done. I probably would be committed if I had to do it all alone. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. And are you the oldest or no? I'm the youngest. I'm the youngest of my mom's children. Okay. Now, my dad had children as well. Mm -hmm. um, my mom was my dad's first marriage, mm -hmm. but he remarried. Um, but when he remarried, like our families blended and the way we were raised, it was you don't say half brother or sister. There is no step brother or sister. Right. That's your brother. That's your sister. And that's all it is. So um, I have a lot of siblings. Okay. I like that. Um, <laughs> I have a what lot you of said. siblings. I don't yeah. believe in the term step or half. No. I feel like it's um, dismissive, if you will. It is. And it it, it's disheartening, too, in a way. I, mm -hmm. I love that you're yep. like that. That's good. I thought I was the only one. No, no. <laughs> I was I was raised like that. That's how I was raised. Yeah. And, um, you know, my daughter, my ex-husband, I should say, mm. um, when he and I came together, he had no children. I had my two sons. But he loved them, accepted them as they were his home. Wow. And like he and I are divorced now, but he still has a relationship with the children. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. That is beautiful. So it was, you know, it it was um, refreshing to, to meet someone whose ideals in that regard were the same as my dad's. You know what I mean? Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I yep. love that. Yeah. So tell me, how are your kids alike? How are they different? And which ones are more like you? They are all different. Of course. <laughs> very, very different. Um, my oldest son is... Um, whew, what do I say about him? <laughs> <laughs> he's he's going to see um, this, so... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay. No, he's... Um, very kind of laid back, um, real nonchalant, real kind of uh, to himself. The middle son is uh, an artist through and through. Music is his passion. That's what he sees, tunnel vision. Um, you know, he has his friends, but He's he's more of a he sits back and he observes. Okay. So you never really know what's going on in his head yeah. until you, you know, until he decides. Yeah. I want to talk to you and this is what I want to speak about. Okay. That little girl though. Oh, look at your eyes. Oh my God. <laughs> You got me scared. My daughter's 10. Like, tell me, what do I have to look forward to for the 15? Come on. Oh, she's me. Oh, 
She's me. But you seem so lovely. You know what? I am. I am. Mm -hmm. I'm stubborn. I am super sarcastic. Um, and she is my mini. When I say she is my mini, she's my mini. Like, she stole my face. She's my mini. Wow. She really is. I feel like all of my kids, you know, really pretty much look like me. Mm -hmm. But she stole my face. And she stole my attitude, personality, the whole nine. Wow. She's my mini. Okay. And she's giving me a run for my money. Oh, boy. And how do we deal with... I'll win, though. <laughs> That's it. I win. I don't I, deal I with mean, anything. I win. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. I'm the mom. Right. You know what I mean? I have so many years more experience over you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'll let you go. But so far. Right. Exactly. And then reel it back you in. You got to reel it back in. Um, you got to reel it back immediately. in. Immediately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she knows when, when the tone of voice changes. Okay. She knows. Like, get in line. Okay. Mm -hmm. So tell me how... Is raising your boys different from how you raise your girl? Um, my boys honestly didn't require a lot. They really didn't. Wow. Um, they weren't taking them to the barbershop to get haircuts. You know what I mean? Um, they weren't so much into fashion and and. These girls now, especially with her, you know, being a teenager, she's so into uh, fashion and makeup and, you know, the whole nine. And I still want her, I want her to enjoy her childhood. But at the same time, I realized that, you know, times have changed there's a 16 year age difference between my oldest and my youngest. So now in the age of social media, you know, things like that, it it's a lot different. And so parenting, my parenting style had to change up a little bit. There are some things like my oldest son will say, you know, you got real relaxed. Like, yeah, we never would would have been able to do that. And I'm like, it's a different time. It's a different time. You know, at least you're aware of that, though. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that. How does how has your parenting style changed with your 30 year old to your 15 year old? Like in what way? Give me a couple examples. So <clears throat> when my oldest son was coming up, like we didn't live in the um, the state of Connecticut. We had moved to to Virginia. So we were in Virginia probably for about nine, close to 10 years of his life. Um, and so, you know, like we didn't have family in Virginia. So it was just like, you know, the friends that, that we, you know, had come in contact with. So it was like, you know, sleepovers, kids want to do sleepovers and things like that. And I wasn't big on it. Mm -hmm. You know, his, his dad and I, obviously, you know, we had to talk about it, but I think both of us were pretty much on the same accord. Like, we're not big on sleepovers. Like, you can't go to their house, but you can have friends come over here. Yeah, they have my house, You know, yeah. because we're in control of the environment yes. and we know what's going on. Yeah. You know, my daughter, and, and that's how it was even with my middle son. Okay. He, he wasn't, I don't even think he ever asked to do a sleepover. He that's, probably already that's, knew. That's how he is. But my daughter, you know what I mean? She wants to go hang out with her friends sometimes. And she wants to do sleepovers and things like that. And because, you know, we're back in Connecticut, we're surrounded by family. So, yeah. you know, to go to your cousin's house and have sleepovers and things like that, I'll let her do that. Some friends, but it's a tricky, it's, it's a tricky situation. And it I is. try to, you know, balance it, but not keep her too too sheltered yeah you know i understand that but my ultimate job is to protect my children keep so, you safe yeah and that's what i'm going to do even if you don't like it yeah i'm doing what's best for you yeah 100 percent. you'll understand absolutely yep so tell me what kind of student is she like how is she in school like is she into any activities things like that she is she um 
she was a very good student. Very smart, very bright. Um, but she knows it. And this is her freshman year in high school. And she's testing the waters a little bit. Oh, wow. Yeah, she's testing the waters a little bit. Um, I just, a couple weeks ago, got a, uh, an email from one of her teachers, her English teacher, as a matter of fact. Got an email from him to say, you know, she was cutting up a little bit mm. in class. And uh, I read the email and I said, you know what? Enough. So I just sent him an email back and mm -hmm. said, um, you know, I appreciate you reaching out to yeah. me. I'm on my way to the school. You went to the school, mom. I left work. I left work. Oh. And I went up to the school. And um, she obviously didn't know that I was coming. And I happened to be sitting in the guidance office and they're changing classes, right? Now, I can't tell you how many kids are in this school, but I'm sitting in the guidance office and there was like no window that I could look out of or anything like that. But they're changing classes and I could hear out of all of the other kids, I could hear my child's voice. Oh, no. I said, I think that's Alyssa. So I waited. I thought she was going to come into the guidance office. Like maybe they had called her down, but no, nope, they hadn't. So I got up. I stepped outside and see her walking down the hall. So I call her name. So she turns around, shocked. She sees me. She comes back. Now she knows if mom is at school and I didn't know that she was going to be here, like something's going on. Yeah. And then immediately it was like, it wasn't my fault. Da -da -da -da. Nope. We're not going to do this. <laughs> like, I'm here to talk to you. I'm here to talk to your teacher. We're all going to sit down and have a meeting to try to figure out what it is that's going on and how we can correct this before you get too far off. Yeah. Off the path. 100%. So um, the meeting went well. Okay. The meeting went well. Um, but she is, and, and one of the things that her teacher did say was that, you know, she's a very bright student, but she's relying on the fact that before she never really had to study. It just came to her. So now she's just, you know, kind of relaxed and thinking that she can coast through. You're in high school. Yeah, there's no coasting. You know, there is no coasting. Mm -hmm. And I was a good kid. Like I was, I was how she was. Okay. You know what I mean? Pretty much a straight A and B student. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Overachiever. You know, yeah. coming up. I always had the best report cards. My sisters, not so much. So they were like, hide your report card. Don't show it to mommy. Like, what? it's the weekend. We still want to have fun. Yeah. Oh, my I was goodness. That, I was like, no, I'm proud of my grades. I'm showing her. You did? Yeah. <laughs> I sure did. <laughs> yeah. So how do you discipline your children? Do you discipline your boys different from your daughter? Or does everybody get the same treatment in your household? It depends on the age. Okay. Well, let me say this. So the only two that are at home, my 22-year-old and the, the, I'll call her 15, mm -hmm. 14, 15-year-old. Mm -hmm. My oldest son is out on his home. Right, right. But, you know, coming up, obviously, my oldest son, he was the first child. So he was the guinea pig. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was... Um, punishment at that point in time was, you know, the spankings, the, uh, not so much time out, but punishments, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Long, sometimes long punishments, yeah. depending on what it is that he did. Mm -hmm. Um, same thing with the middle son, mm -hmm. my daughter, same thing. Except that now, as a teenager, in order to get her attention, you have to take away, like, everything. <laughs> take away the phone. Take away the, the laptop. Take away, you know, iPads. Like, the whole thing. 
and the ability to go and hang out with your friends and do those things. Like all of that has to be stripped away from you. So right now I have her phone, MacBook, iPad, like I have all of it. I told her, I said, don't even ask to go anywhere because it's not happening. Like the answer is no. And how long does it last? Well, the ability to spend time with her friends, she may get that back at some point in time. I'm holding on to the cell phone and the, the, the laptop until summer vacation. Summer? Summer. When school is out. Oh, we're in March. Yep. Oh, that baby got a a lot of ways to go. Oh, man. I mean, (laughs) I don't reward bad behavior. Of course not. I do not reward bad behavior. And as a matter of fact, her grandmother wanted to, to throw her a big 15th birthday party. And I told her, I said, well, you might need to hold off a little bit. Like, let's see how she does. Wow. Because, you know, getting a phone call and to have to go to the school. Yeah. You know, that's not. You're, it's embarrassing for me. It, it is. Mm-hmm. And, the it, you know, the guidance counselor was so funny because the guidance counselor was kind of, you know, straddling the fence a little bit. We mm-hmm. were sitting in there and, of course, you know, the tears start rolling for her. Yeah. And so she's like, you know, he was like, you know, I see both sides. You know, mom's not happy that she had to be here and you're not happy that mom showed up and, you know, she called you out in the in the hallway and she embarrassed you. And so she's telling me this is a guidance counselor saying this. Now, I wanted to have choice words for him, but I didn't. <laughs> but she's saying, you know, obviously she's going to agree with him. So she was like, yeah, that's like really embarrassing. So I said, OK, you know, I'll accept that. But you know what else is embarrassing? getting an uh, an email from your teacher that says that you were doing this, this, and this. And I know that that's not how I'm raising you. Yeah. You know that what you're doing is, is not acceptable. Right. It's a reflection of me, essentially. Exactly. Yeah. So that's embarrassing as well. Mm-hmm. Do you think, it, were it not for you and your actions, I would still be sitting at work. Yeah. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be taking time off from work to come and handle this issue. So you spoke to her in a way where she can sense, in a sense, take accountability. Mm -hmm. And did it work? Um, It did. Like she, she was accountable. She did, um, you know, and I waited at the, at the school until the teacher had a free period in order to be able to all of us meet. Um, And we met Mm -hmm. and, you know, she knew. That she needed to apologize for her actions. Yes. Um, And his next report to me was she had an amazing week that um, in the class they were um, studying Hamilton. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, she was in her element. So he was like, you know, she had an amazing week. And that was good to hear. Like, these are the reports that I want to get for you. You know, I don't want reports that are bad reports because you're not a bad kid. Right. I know it and you know it. So just, you know, go to school. I still want you to be a kid. You know what I mean? I, but don't go to school and show out for your friends. You know? Right. Like your friends don't have the same parents that you do. I say that a lot to my daughter. The consequences are going to be different. Very different. I always say to my daughter, don't let your friends get you in trouble. Mm-hmm. I'd hate, I'd hate to be you. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So do you think that uh, physical discipline is less effective than taking things away? I do. Okay. I do. Um, it, but, and it took me so many years mm-hmm. and three children yeah. to realize that. Um, you know, one of the things that I realized with the, the physical discipline mm-hmm. is, you know, it, I believe that it breaks your child's spirit. It definitely does. And I never want to do that. Never. You know what I mean? It was something that I didn't realize, you know, as a young mother. Yeah. You know, even though I say I was I was ready for it. Mm-hmm. Um, it was something that I, I didn't realize, you know, at the time. And I wish I had in hindsight. Yeah. You know, I wish I I I I 
thought about it, you know, yeah. but, um, you know, the only thing that you can do now mm-hmm. is be accountable. You know what I mean? Yeah. Speak to my, my sons, you know, and let them know, you know what I mean? It wasn't this, this wasn't something that I wanted to do in order to break your spirit. It was just something that I wanted to do in order to, you know what I mean? Mold you what I thought was, um, you know, to be a good person, Yeah. you know, um, I have to take accountability for that. And and they have to see it so that when their time comes, they're accountable for their actions. You're yeah. going to make me cry. No. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So you do believe that parents should apologize to their children? Absolutely. Absolutely. Me too. When it's warranted. Oh, 100%. Because I'm somebody like I, you know, I started out saying I'm, I'm very stubborn. Yeah. And I don't give apologies loosely. Like, of course not. I, I believe in if if I sit back and I think about it and I say, you know what, Nikki, you were wrong. Mm-hmm. You owe whomever an apology. I'm going to issue that apology. Now, whether or not they accept the apology is on them. But I know that the apology is old. And so I'm going to give it. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And that's what I teach my kids. That's so good. Yeah. And do you think that when you do have those talks about teaching them about accountability and just life in general, do you think they're listening to you? I do. Okay. I do. That's good. Yeah. And if and since you said you think they are listening, how so? Like what what have they done that's like, hmm, I told them that. Well <laughs> <laughs> Um I think just them feeling as though they can come to me for advice, um, lets me know that they value what it is that I, I say yeah. and what it is that I'm teaching them. Um, my oldest will try to figure things out on his own. Um, but there are times where, you know, he'll come to me and he'll say, you know, what do you think about this? Um, business like a, a business uh plan that he was he was looking to develop a um an apparel line clothing apparel line nice. and because he knows that that was something that you know I did he'll come to me nice you know for advice um he actually just contacted me probably a couple of days ago regarding a car that he's looking at getting so yeah he he'll come to me for advice. My son, the middle one, who's there in the house every so many days, you know, mom, what do you think about this? And his are always kind of um, life lessons. Yeah. He's trying to, you know, figure his way out. He's 22. He's trying to figure his way out in, in, in this world. So he'll come to me and ask me for advice. My daughter obviously thinks she knows it, <laughs> you know, like she's, she thinks she's, she's the same age as me. And so, you know, she knows it all. Um, but one of the things that I say to her is, you know, you can come to me mm-hmm. with anything. Um, she and I went out exercising, and walking and talking. And yeah. I told her, you know what I mean? This is a time, it's a safe space. Anything you want to talk to me about you can talk to me about it and there's no judgment. You know what I mean? Even if you think that I might get upset, this is a time where I won't even get upset. We're just going to walk and talk and we'll figure it out. Hopefully, you know, that really opened the door for her and she'll feel comfortable enough. Yeah. So we'll see. I love that. When those tough discussions have to happen. That was going to be my next question about tough discussions. What's that? Okay. So obviously every parent has to have the sex talk. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. How is your approach with your boys versus your daughter about sex? Ooh. So my oldest son, I didn't even tackle that. That, no. I didn't tackle it in terms of like, you know, really delving deep into it. I let, you know, his dad 
do okay. that. Yeah. Um, the middle son, I don't know what it was, but I happened to be driving in the car with him one day. And I said to him, um, I'm going to ask you a question. I said, um, and what is the one thing you think that I'm going to say? And he said, be honest. I said, okay. My kids know that the biggest thing with me is honesty. Yes. Like, it's huge. Like, major for me. Major. And that's that's pretty much with anybody in my life. But, you know, I stress it with my kids. Mm -hmm. Right? So... That's why I said to him, I'm going to ask you a question, but um, what am I going to say? And so he said, be honest. So I said, okay. I said, um, are you, because he had a girlfriend. I said, um, you having sex? I probably shouldn't even be telling his story, huh? I mean, not you don't have to get details, okay. but va- you could be vague. So I asked him. Yeah. And he was honest with me. And okay. he said yes. Right? So I said, okay. All right. So now I know. How'd you feel, mom? Tell me that part. I was I was driving. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I think I kind of knew. Did your heart you stop? You know what I mean? Uh, it skipped a beat. <laughs> maybe two. Um, but so I said to him, I said, listen. And and she was younger than him, but like he wasn't like like an adult and she's like oh, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean, a child or yeah. whatever. But you know, just the fact that she was younger than him, it it you know, just kind of did something to me. You know what I mean? And so I said to him, I said, Listen, I said, um I'm not happy, you know what I mean? That you're having sex. But you need to be protected. That's one. Two, if you guys could wait, you know what I mean, until, you know, her birthday comes around and she catches up in age, you know what I mean, to you, it would just make me feel better, you know? But I told him, like, listen, if this is what you're going to do, This is what you need. Make sure, you know what I mean? This, this, and that. You need to always be respectful. You know, I had to talk. No is no. That's it. Yes, no is no. Yeah. 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 So um, we had that talk that was in the car. And then the next question I asked was um, if he was sexting. Which is something that I didn't have to ask my oldest, mm, right? Because, yeah. you know, he he didn't have a cell phone, you know, very early on. Um, and he said yes. So oh Jesus, I'm like, Lord! <laughs> please don't make me crash this vehicle. <laughs> I'm like, these kids. It's like, yeah, yeah. What are we doing? Now, you know, yeah. but these are the questions that you have to ask. One of the things that I'm, I'm um, very grateful for mm-hmm. was the fact that he was honest about it. You know what I mean? Not afraid, you know, I mean, there might have been some fear like, oh, God, like, yeah. I'm going to tell her the truth. But mm-hmm. but one of the things that I say to them, it's like, listen, I always want the truth. Like, I don't care how bad the truth is. Give it to me. Because the consequences for you telling me the truth are a lot less severe than the consequences of you telling me a lie. I love that. You know? So he told me the truth. So, all right, Nikki, now what you going to do with it? Right, right. You going to be upset? You going to fly off the handle so that then the next time he won't tell you the truth? Mm. Or... You're just going to stay relaxed. You're going to continue to drive and you're going to talk your way through it. 
And that's what we did. I love that. Parents should be mindful of how they react because mm-hmm. the kids might not come back. They may not. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yep. So now, baby girl, have you talked to her yet or? We have not had the talk yet. Okay. I do know that it's coming. Um, I'm dreading it. Mm-hmm. I will say because this is a different time. Mm-hmm. Um, when I leave here, I'll probably go home and grab her phone and start sifting through it. Oh, mom! I'm gonna take the opportunity to do that. Oh, but lord! Yeah. Um, but she's a good kid. Like I, I don't feel as though. Um, she is at the point where she is even considering. Good, good. Um, I don't, I don't feel like it, mm-hmm. but um, check back with me tomorrow. <laughs> we'll do. <laughs> <laughs> After I had an opportunity to go through the phone, and we'll see. Yeah, but okay, but yeah. Do you ever worry about your daughter's safety more so than your boys? In this world, like. That's a good question. Um, Do I worry about her safety? I don't feel as though I worry about her safety more, but the the different there are differences that I worry about. So with my daughter, you know, obviously I worry about, um, you know, especially her, say, walking to and from the bus stop. You know what I mean? Things of that nature. Um, Whether or not someone's going to try to, to, you know, snatch her up. You know what I mean? With my boys, I didn't work. (sighs) That wasn't a fear of mine because, not, not that it wasn't a fear of mine. It wasn't that they would try to snatch my boys up in order to, like, sexually assault them or anything like that. That's the fear I have for my daughter. Me too. For my boys, when they're out and about in the world, I have a fear of um, gun violence. Yes. That's the fear that I have for them. Um, Police brutality. That's a huge fear that I have for them. Um... But my daughter is just, and I don't know why, and it probably should not be that way. You know, my fears for my kids should be the same fear across the board. But I think that um, as black men, Mm -hmm. my boys are looked at differently, definitely by law enforcement, by, um, you know, just society in general. Um, and so that's the fear that I have for them. But my daughter, um, sexual assault is like at the top, at the of, the top of the list, yeah. it's at the top of the list. I agree you with know? you. Um, I know in terms of like bullying and things like that, she can hold her own. That was going to be my next question. Oh, oh really? <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask you, how do you deal with like bullying and sending your daughter to school with how, you know, school lockdowns, the drills, the school shootings, bullying as a whole. Like, how do you, are you afraid to send your daughter to school at all? I haven't been. Even with like the school shootings and everything, you don't fear anything? Um, I try not to focus Understood. on, on, I try not to, to let that occupy my mind too much. Like it's in the back of my head, don't get me wrong, but I try not to let it occupy my mind because I don't want it to come to fruition. You see what I'm saying? Um but the one thing that I do know is at any point in time um if anything is happening, you know, I try to to tell my kids like you know, even my sons when they were coming up. Like you have your cell phone, although my daughter doesn't have hers now, but you have your cell phone. And at any time, point in time that you don't feel safe, 
you make a phone call. Like, you call me. Right. You know what I mean? And I'm coming. Like, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I'm there. Um, but it's, I'm more afraid, honestly, mm-hmm. not necessarily of school shootings, but being in the supermarket. <gasps> yeah. The Walmart. The, the movie theater and having something happen. Church. Those are things that, that I'm, you know, I'm kind of, I'm mindful of. Yeah. Um, and I say that, like, we go to the movies and you know how you can pick your seat for the movies now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I pick my seats for the movies. I want to be at the back so that I can observe everything that's going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. My kids don't necessarily know that's why I'm doing it. But as a mother and being able to protect my children, like that's, those are my thoughts. You know? Yeah. That's good. So you mentioned earlier that you were divorced. Yes. How did a divorce take a toll on your kids or did it even take a toll on your children? To say that it didn't, um, it was not noticeable, I'll say that. Um, It it wasn't very noticeable. Um, I think until COVID hit, I'll say that. Um, My ex-husband and I... um, maintain a very kind of healthy co-parenting um, dynamic. My oldest son was already out the house, um, but the the middle son and my daughter, um, at the point in time that he and I separated, um, we, we developed a, a, a plan for, you know, visitation. So it was like, you know, the kids were with me throughout the week and every weekend they would go to his house. Um, You know, we did that for a good little while, but then COVID hit. When Mm -hmm. COVID hit, it was like our approaches to COVID were completely different. Really? How so? Um... I was extra cautious just because we didn't know, you know what I mean, really what was going on. And um, I needed to protect not only us, but I also had an elderly mother. So I couldn't risk me getting sick, the kids getting sick, any of us being around my mom and my mom getting sick. So... I had to make the decision to uh, not allow the kids to go for visitation. Oh, wow. So that was tough. Yeah. Yeah. That was tough. Um, And I know that it bothered him. And I know that it hurt him. But without... Without knowing... Like, you know, COVID was, was... It was a scary time. Very much so. You know? And in my opinion, he still moved. As if we were COVID free. As if we were COVID free. And and the people that he surrounded himself with, his family, they moved the same way. I can't risk it. Like it's it's it wasn't worth the risk. It wasn't. You know? Um it was it was difficult, mm-hmm. and that lasted probably almost a year and a half. Wow, almost a year and a half. Oh my goodness! Yeah, it it it. Um, I could tell that it it began to bother my daughter more so, um, and that's not to say. I mean, you know. They still had technology. They could still talk. They FaceTime, could still, all that, you yeah. know, FaceTime. And I, you know, and I even said, I said, listen, I said, even if you want to, you know, call me up and say, 
hey, I want to see the kids. Can we meet at the park or something like that? I said, I'm more than willing to do that. But to let them come and stay and, you know, you come and pick them up or no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Got to respect mama's choice. Yeah. I mean, you know, dad has a say so, too. But. But in that case, I get it. Yeah. So my next question actually was going to be, was there ever a time where your parenting decisions were criticized, but you just answered the question? Are there any other moments where your parents and choices were criticized by others? Not necessarily your ex-husband, but anyone in your family. Oh, absolutely. Which, like which my, decisions? My family, uh, sisters mm-hmm. in particular, um, my she's the oldest sister, but the middle one, the mm-hmm. one, she's like 18, 18 months older than me. She thinks I'm just too strict. Really? Yeah, she thinks I'm too strict. I don't think so. I think that um, I have to prepare these little people that I've been entrusted with. Like, I have to prepare them to go out in this world mm-hmm. and be successful. That's my job. And I take my job seriously. Like, I need to put out three, three productive members of society and one of them who has a child of his own, I need to make sure that I've instilled enough in him between me and his dad, have instilled enough in him that he can then turn around and pass it down to his son. You you know what I'm saying? So, you know, you can think that my methods, you know, are too strict, you know, so forth and whatnot, but I think I've done a pretty good job. You know what I mean? Um, they're still here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, no real legal trouble. You know what I mean? That's a blessing. You know, my oldest son, he's, you know, but no jail time. You know, and, and I told him, I remember telling him when he was out on his own. I said, let me tell you something. I better not get a phone call. And I bet not see nothing on the news. That's it. That's it. Was That's it hard it. letting him move out? It was it hard letting him move out. It wasn't because he had gotten to the point where he wasn't following the rules. Right? Oh, okay. So because you're not following the rules. You know what I mean? You're of age. And now you you have to make a way for yourself. If you cannot follow the rules of the household, you have to make a way for yourself. You know? Um, and I just remember being afraid, you know, worrying about him. I did worry about him, but I prayed over him. Every day I prayed over him to, you know what, even to this day, if I'm watching the news and they say, you know, something happened, I'm always listening for like ages, yes. things of that nature. And I'm always like, you know, and I take into account my son's age, my nephews, you know what I mean? Older and younger than him. You know what I mean? Uh, those are the things that go through my mind. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm listening for that first. Um, if I get a phone call in the middle of the night, like I don't turn my ringer off. I'm one of those people. Like if my phone rings in the middle of the night, like I'm looking at it and I'm picking it up. 100%. And I remember one time I, w- I was out of town and... Mm-hmm. It was like one something, two something in the morning. Mm -hmm. And my phone is ringing. And I looked at it and I was like, oh, my God, is this kid calling me, my oldest? Mm -hmm. So I answer and I'm like, what's going on? And he's like, can you call me, you know, like a a tow truck? He was like, I got into an accident. (sighs) He had left work. And he said, uh, 
I said, what do you mean? And he said, he had gotten into an accident. He had just left work. He said he could see his job. He said, um, I didn't think I was tired, but he must have like closed his eyes. Oh. And I called his dad because his dad was still, you know, his dad was here in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, listen, can you go check on him? Go, you know, go pick him up or do whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, don't let him just go home. Like, make sure he goes to the hospital because the, the state police had come, but he refused, like, medical. And I'm like, no, you're not doing that. Like, I don't know whether or not you hit your head or anything. Like, you're not going home. You're going to the hospital For to, sure. to get checked out. Mm -hmm. So I told his dad, you know, make sure he goes. Mm -hmm. And um, his his dad made sure that he went. And so once I got on the road, I knew he was safe and things like that. I gave him a call, and I'm talking to him. And he said, Mom, you know what? He was like, I almost never put my seatbelt on. He said, I don't know what it was, but that day when I left this morning, he was like, I put my seatbelt on. And he hit a tree. Oh, God. Yep. I said, that was nothing but God. I got chills. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Yep. Yep. So you're a woman of faith. Absolutely. I love Absolutely. that. I, I love that. Yep. That gave me chills. I'm happy. I'm happy he's okay. Seriously. Yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, those are the phone calls that I, you know, I dread. Yeah. But, you know, just for you to even think, you know what I mean? Like, this happened. Okay, let me call my mom. Mm -hmm. Like, call me. Right. Without a doubt, I'm always going to be there. Even if I'm not there physically, I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to make a way. Some way, somehow. Some way, Mommy's somehow. coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So are your boys mama's boys or are they closer to their dad? And same question for your daughter. My oldest is not. <laughs> My oldest is not. The, the middle one. Yeah. I didn't think he was, but he is. Okay. Um, he moved away briefly. He moved away briefly. And when I say he was gone all of two months. He, he came right back. back. He was back. <laughs> yep, yep. And he was like, I've never lived without my mom. So I was like, okay. I love that. And okay. is your daughter a daddy's girl or mama's girl? I'd say neither. Woman of her own show, she, young lady of her own show. Yep. <laughs> she marches to the beat of her own drum. But I told you, you know, yeah. she really is a, a, a mini me, but she's very strong willed. Yeah. Like, you know, she's going to do whatever it is that she wants to do. I love that. Yeah. What are some of the morals that you instill in your children? Honesty. And that's first and foremost. Absolutely. Yeah. First and foremost. Um, you know, develop a strong work ethic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, be kind. Be kind. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't be a doormat, though. Don't be a doormat. Right. You know? Um, and definitely, you know, believe in God. You know, you have to have faith. Like, my, my mother... Not even just my mother instilled that in us. My grandmother, my paternal grandmother, mm -hmm. like always, you know what I mean? Had us in church and, you know, and then my mother at the same time until, you know, we turned 18 and then it was you decide for yourself, you know, yeah, what you want to do, what church you want to go to, things of that nature. And you know, when when you you grow up and you feel as though, you know, this is my life to live, you know, you kind of, you might venture away. But the one thing is, when the foundation is laid, mm -hmm. even if you stray away, no matter how you far you go, you always find your way back. That's right. No yeah. matter how far you go. I love yeah. that. Yeah. 
Was there ever a point in your parenting journey that you ever felt like, I can't do this or I don't got this? You ever got overwhelmed? I can't say I have. I want to be just like you. (laughs) (laughs) No, you don't. (laughs) No, I can't say I have. Not, um, you know, my kids, when I sit back, Mm -hmm. they're pretty good kids. Like, don't get me wrong. They've given me my share of trouble, my share of angst. You know what I mean? Yeah. But when I sit back and I compare it, like I see what other people go through, Mm -hmm. I'm like, I hit the jackpot. (laughs) Like, these kids are not half bad. Yeah. You know, like my my kids are pretty good. That's beautiful. They're pretty good. I love that. So, no. I it's the that. other parts of life that get overwhelming. Oh, for sure. But being a mother, mm-hmm. no. Okay. No. And when life does get the best of you, I'm talking about you as the working woman, not the mom, just Nicole. When life does get the best of you and it does become overwhelming, how do you decompress? Like, what are some of the things that you do? Because mommy's mental health matters. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um I definitely I've I've now really have gotten to the point where I say all I want is peace in my life. Yes. And so I do those things that are going to give me peace. Yes. Um and if that's a a getaway to do absolutely nothing. Nothing. I'm not cleaning up after nobody. I'm not washing clothes, doing dishes. I'm not cooking. Nothing. I'm I'm doing whatever it is that I want to do. And if whatever it is that I want to do is nothing but listen to music, journal, you know what I mean? That's what I'm going to do. I remember, (laughs) funny, I remember um, when I lost my dad, right? And I said, um... I just wanted to be with nature, right? And um, I knew a spot up in New Hampshire. And I, like, I knew the drive was going to be, you know, a good drive. So I said, uh, I wanted to go up to New Hampshire and just go stay at this cute little inn and just do nothing, right? So I made plans. That's what I was going to do. And this was, remember I told you, when uh, my ex-husband and I separated, like, the kids would be with me during the weekend, and they would go with him on the weekends. So this was a weekend that I was going to take off and, and go. So I'm getting the kids ready to go with my ex. And my daughter goes, where are you going? So I said, I'm, I'm going up to New Hampshire. And she was like, can we come and go with you? Oh, I'm like, this is supposed to be my time alone. (laughs) So I said, call daddy and see if it's okay with him. If it's okay with him, then yeah, you can come and go. And sure enough, it was okay with him. So I don't get my time alone, right? That, to this day, she remembers the name of the inn that we stayed at. And she continues to ask Can we go back to New Hampshire? Can we go back to New Hampshire? Like, she had so much fun. She enjoyed it. You know what I mean? I didn't get the the solitude. You know what I mean? Obviously. But it created a memory for her. Yeah. You know what I mean? My son remembers it, too. But she just grabbed hold of it. She will not forget about it. She's like, I want my birthday this year to be at the common man in, in New Hampshire. I'm like this kid. I love that. Yep. But, uh, those are things that I do. You know, I found a cute little quaint little spot here in, in Connecticut, the getaway house. It's like a little, 
Cabin in the Woods. What? Cabin in the Woods. I got to check it out. You got to share the address with me I when, will. We're, when we're done. I will. <laughs> it, it's just to be one with nature. Yeah. Like, and I'm a city girl. Me too. I'm a city girl. Yeah. But in my older age, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm realizing that I like the calmness of nature. Yeah. No television there, you know. Give me my music. Mm. That's all I need. My music and my journal. I'm That's good. It. Yeah. That's it. I think that comes with like getting older though. Like for me, I'm, I'm going to be 33 like I said. I want more peace of mind now than I ever did in my really? 20s. Really? What? And this happens hitting me early. No. Like at 30, I was 33. <laughs> I, mm. But you know, I did the I was still going. I but I did all that so early on mm-hmm. that when I finally hit like 30, 31, I was like, it's time to like buckle down for real. Yeah. You know what I mean? Always remained a good mom. As long as Dakota was good, I didn't, whatever I did with my life is what I do with my life. As long mm-hmm. as my daughter was okay, she was mm-hmm. safe. Nobody was, like you said, touching her. Mm-hmm. She wasn't in harm's way. Mm-hmm. I'm going to walk to the beat of my own drum. But at some point I just hit like a halt. And I think God stopped me in my tracks. It yeah. was like, it's, it's time to come on back. Yeah. And then at that point it's like, I just want peace. I want yeah. good times. I want a lot of laughs. Yeah. And good vibes. Yep. There's, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yep. Yep. But yep. unfortunately, when you take that step back, some people don't understand that. No, they did don't. You, did you ever deal with that when you finally was like, I want to just stop and just chill and be one with Nicole? Did you get like bad feedback or were people understanding of that journey? No, people are understanding. Okay. But I think I think because it's it's just now coming for me at this point in time in mm-hmm. my life, yeah. I think that, you know, they're understanding. Like, I I may pop out every now and again, mm-hmm. but I like just to chill out, yeah. relax. You know what I mean? Not necessarily be to myself, but even if I go out, like, I'm not, even now, like not a huge partier. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I go out, it's a brunch, you know, a lounge. Yeah. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, grown like, and sexy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's my vibe. Now, don't get me wrong. I haven't celebrated the birthday since prior to COVID. So this year, I said I'm doing it. I'm you celebrating. Have to. I'm partying this year. But as you should. Once I do that, you know, and as you get older, you'll find out. You don't bounce back from partying <laughs> like you used to when you were younger. Yeah. Because, you know, prior to having kids. Oh. What you say? I had my daughter at 21. So. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Prior to having kids, even after, like even when I had I had my son, I, you know, I still partied a little bit. But one thing I will tell you. Yeah. My mother said, and this is while I was pregnant. OK. Um. I am not the babysitting grandma. <gasps> she, so she said, said that? She said, I'm not the babysitting grandma. She said, don't ask me to babysit. She said, that's your child. You know what I mean? You're going to raise him. Mm. I'm not the babysitting grandma. I'll let you know when I want my grandchildren. Wow. When I tell you, I have never, never asked my mom to babysit for my kids. What? Never. never. I never asked her to babysit for my Did kids. Did she end up taking them a lot though anyway? Yeah, she would take them. She would say, you know what I mean? Like, I want to take them out to eat. I want to take them to the movies. I want to take them to an NAACP function. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, she would say, you know, those types of things. Yeah. You know, I'm come, either I'm coming to pick them up or, you know, can you drop them off? She would do that. But to call her up and say, Ma, hey, Ma, I want to go hang out. Can you... No, I never did it. Then I must say I have the cream of the crop because my mom will take Dakota in a heartbeat. Yeah. And in a heartbeat. And, and honestly, that's because my mom would rather her be with her mm-hmm. than anybody else anyway. Mm-hmm. Like I never send her with just anybody. It's mm-hmm. only like four people that Dakota can be with. Like, yeah, yeah. Related and all that. But my oh. mom was like, no, uh, she's coming with me. Yeah. So. Listen, don't get me wrong. I'm sure... I could have called her, like, even though she said that, I could have called her and asked her and she would have been like, sure. But one of the things about my mom, like my mom, (laughs) when I say an amazing woman, an amazing woman, like amazing, 
um, she was always busy on the go. Yeah. Like, whether it was work, whether it was like um, she held several offices with the NAACP, mm. um, you know, president, vice president, you know, um, the elections committee, like all types of committee. Like my mom was that person. You know what I mean? Always busy, always doing something. I think that that's probably where I get my drive from. Um, probably my dad, too, because my dad was a serial entrepreneur. Mm. Um, but she just, to say that she sat still, she didn't. She really did not. My mom did not sit still until the day she left this earth. Wow. Like, yeah. And you don't sit still either. Me neither. Mm-mm. And I, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. Until, you know. Like Recently. COVID like slowed me down a little bit. Okay. Well, and, it slowed everybody but, down. But now. You're back rolling. I'm getting back. I'm getting <laughs> I love back that. Yeah. I get a lot of blowback for that, though. Really? Yeah, because I work. I work a lot. Like, I'm, I'm a workaholic. I spend time with my daughter. I'm, my daughter with me every day, mm-hmm. almost every weekend. Mm-hmm. But I have to work. I, I, I like to work. I like to do different things. I like to chase my dreams. I like to get on to the next thing. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's such a bad thing for a woman mm-hmm. to be a mother and work. I feel like you can still be a mom and follow your dreams. Do yeah. you do you agree? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, one of the things that I, I was told um, maybe about six, seven years ago was... If you're going, you know, and you're a working mom and there are times where you have to be away from your children, you have to sit down and have a talk with them. Explain to them why you're doing what it is that you're doing. When you explain to them why it is that you're doing what you're doing and you get them on board and they're okay with it and you let them know, like, I'm doing this for us and this is the reward that comes along after then they understand so you know that's what you have to do and so that's what I started doing and then you know one of the things you know I brought cookies here right like I'm a baker yes I was gonna ask you about the cookies I certainly Mm -hmm. was (laughs) so I'm a baker so that the good thing about that is it affords me the opportunity to be able to be at home and bake. And my kids see it. Like my kids know my hustle. So you have a cookie business, a baking business, excuse me. Cookies. Cookies. Like cookies are my specialty. Like I, you know, I bake, but cookies are the specialty. Like okay. that's the thing. Um, and I'm I'm planning for retirement. I told you, I've been with the federal government for coming up on 37 years. Beautiful, mom. Retirement is like, I can see it. Knocking on the door. I can see it. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not going to retire and do absolutely nothing. Of course. I'm going to retire and do what makes me happy. What you want to do. You know? Yes. Yeah. So. I love that. That's the plan. That's amazing. That's the plan. Yep. I do have a hypothetical question for you. I asked all my parents. Okay. It's about your children and dating. If your sons or your daughter brought home someone that you were just like, absolutely not. Would you tell them right off the bat or would you allow experience to show them why they shouldn't be with that person? It depends. It depends. Um, If my gut tells me that really and truly, this is not a good person. And whatever it is about them is going to be detrimental to my child. Um, I'm speaking up. I'm voicing my opinion. Um, and they may have to make a choice, you know, whether or not, especially if they're, living in my home, mm-hmm. whether or not you you still want to live here or if this is the path that you want to go down. Because 
What I'm not going to allow is especially, um, I'm not going to allow anything to come and disrupt my household. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, if it's, you know, maybe a little gray area, maybe, you know, just something about them that just doesn't sit right with me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I may say a little something, but it'll be in passing and, you know, I'll just keep an eye on them. Eventually, you'll see what I see. I like that. Yeah. And if your children, any of them, were to bring home um, someone they were dating of the same sex, would you approve or disapprove? How would you feel about that? Um, is it a good person? Are they happy? Are they treating my child the way that my child deserves to be treated? Um I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. Now, do not get me wrong. Just because I'm fine with it doesn't mean that the world is fine with it. Right. And so that's a talk that I'm going to have to have with my child. Um, don't think for a moment that you live in a bubble and you need to always be aware that who you choose may not be who the world chooses for you. And you need to be aware of that and protect yourself at all costs. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, um, I love my children unconditionally. And they tap dance on my last nerve sometimes. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sure I tap dance on theirs, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But ultimately, I want my children to be happy. Happy with whatever decisions they make. Happy with the partners that they choose. You see what I'm saying? And my mom used to say something. If you, if you like it, I love it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So as long as they're happy, you know, and they're being treated lovingly and with respect. Yep. I can't ask for anything more. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So is there anything in your parents' and journey, if you can go back in time and change, would you? Like, would you have kids sooner, later, Any anything? I would have had my children closer together. I definitely would have had my children closer together because I feel like um, they're all um, only children. You know what I mean? Because of the age gaps. Yeah. It's like they're only children. Now, granted, they are going to come together and, and take care of one another, you know, when mom is no longer here. But I wish, you know, the way I grew up with my my siblings, especially, you know, my sisters, they're in the household with my mom. Um, there's a closeness, a bond that we have, you know, memories of going to high school together, you know, being in elementary school together that we can all share. My kids don't have that. They have their own memories with themselves. They have their own memories with themselves and their friends. Understood. Okay. Yep. yep. So other than that? Other than that, um, you know, maybe... You know, my oldest son, not necessarily having to, to be the guinea pig, but, you know. Understood. I have to, I, I still have many more years on this earth, God forbid, that uh, I can make up for it. And you will. Yeah. And I think you're doing a phenomenal job just by me sitting down talking to you today. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So I have one last question for mm -hmm. you. Tell me five things that you feel 
make up a great mother? Five things that make up a great mother. Yeah. Um, communication. Um, prayer. Uh, mm. Honesty. Ooh, this is a tough question. Take your time, huh? We got time. <laughs> Listening. I like that. Listening. Because we as parents... Because we're older than our children, like we think, you know what I mean? We know it all. Like we know more than they do. But if we take the time out to really listen to them, you can learn from them, not just be the teacher. Right. Like you can also be the student as well. So the ability to listen is is definitely um, something that makes up a good mom. And just um, leading by example. Mm-hmm. You know, that's one of the things that I think my mom was great at, leading by example, you know? Yeah. So. Those are wonderful key yeah. points. Thank you. I love them. <laughs> and I absolutely adore talking to you today. It was, oh, it was thank refreshing. you so much for having me. Absolutely. Please come back anytime. I will. I will. <laughs> Are you going to have some cookies? I definitely will try your cookies. You um, okay. Is your business on social media? It is not on social media. Okay. I'm actually in the, in the process of rebranding, but okay. I have so much on my plate right now. Like it's, it really is not funny. Like I'm a, a full-time you know, career woman, Mm -hmm. a full-time mom, you know, I do my business, the the cookie business, do that on the side. And, you know, I do kind of volunteer work. Like I'm in, like right now on my way here. Yeah. I was on a conference call, a video conference driving here. Yeah. You know, for a sixth grade writing contest in the city of Hartford. Nice. Yeah. So I... So, so much. And we are in the process now. We we had to judge the um, the essays that mm-hmm. were written. And in two weeks, three weeks, we'll be doing the award ceremony. So I'm on the committee for that. Wow. It, there's so, so much. A woman of many hats. I have my, my, my hands in, but. Yeah. Wow. Yep. That many hats yep. and you still make time to be a phenomenal mom. My mom did it, so why can't I? I love that. And I'm not even half the woman that she was. That's so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. Yep. And again, I am sorry about your mom. Oh, thank you. Thank You're very you. welcome. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. It was, not to say that it was her time. Yeah. I won't say that, but she had done so much mm. for everybody else. For everybody else. It was time for her to rest. It was time for her to rest. And that, I think, I'm getting a little teary-eyed. It's okay. But that's what made it bearable. That's what made it bearable. It was time. You know how they say... um, When, when your work is done. Yeah. That's when. Job well done. Yeah. I know she's in heaven. I know it. So in hindsight, you have a guardian angel now. Absolutely. I have several. Yeah. I have several. But she's the brightest one. Oh, you're going to make me cry. Yeah, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay. No, okay. no, no. Don't cry. Don't cry. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, on that note, God is good. God is good. And like I said before, please come again. I will. I will. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank we here you. at Parental Vision appreciate you. All righty. All righty. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone, that's a wrap for Parental Vision. Until next time. Bye. Bye.